he works at a break place. They're they're in uh they're in Sandusky, Ohio in the movie. Yes. And they yes, have a yes. they have a place, they have a manufacturing company for auto parts, Callahan Auto Parts. And it and early in the uh early in the movie. One of the guys is going to buy a bulk order of auto parts from Tommy Boy's dad, uh, ask him for a guarantee. There's no guarantee on the box. And his comeback as a salesperson was like, guarantee? You don't need a guarantee. He's like, hey, you can get a good look at a T-bone by sticking your head up a bull's ass, but I'd rather take the butcher's word for it. This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs> All right, so we got to do this. We got to do this fast before my internet cuts out. <laughs> okay, I'm plugging in my earbuds. Yeah, we got to we got to really get a move on on this, guys. My internet here in Mexico is probably going to be good for about ten minutes max. Uh, so we got to get a move on. When <laughs> I want to tell the story that you already know. <laughs> Oh gosh! I'll I'll give I'll give my this? portion of the story. Yeah, I'll, I'll give my portion of the story, and then I'll let you jump in. Yeah, you know, you, you, you're, you're going to start I with this. Feel like, this is no. Me... Before we start, <laughs> before we start, I need people to know we have been waiting for days to hear what the he- hell happened with Brent. We don't know. We have and, no idea where this is going. So, people, and, we're and in just, as it's, just it's, as you are right now. <laughs> It's not even a me story. Like it, I just happened to be an. Ex- I just happened to be there when the, when the story happened. Um, you know, and and I, you know, I wasn't going to mention much about it. Uh, but you know, Alex <laughs> thought it was hilarious. First of all, Al- for those of you who don't know, Alex Cartmill, he's one of our coaches. He's he's sort of the head of, of OTA. You know, second only to Jonathan and. Amber's the head of OTA, but uh, so so we we do the OTC, right? The online trainer coaching, and it's awesome. And we're coaching coaches all over the world, awesome coaches from all over the globe. Um, and part of what we do with OTC is we give a um, we give a seminar with the programming guru behind it. Guru is probably not a good word. Jonathan's gone again. Guru is probably not a great word. Uh, to use in terms of coaching, but you know Joe Dowdell, he's he's very well known in circles. I think oh, yeah, Jonathan mentioned one time thing. before. Yeah, yeah, he, Jonathan mentioned one time before. He's trained the likes of Anne Hathaway, I think uh, Gerard Butler, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you know, sort of a celeb trainer and owned a owned a tremendous gym in, in Manhattan for a long time in New York City. Jonathan met him er- earlier mm-hmm. in his own career. Um, so Joe Dowdell is the guy who does the programming for OTC. The other five coaches. Pause for a second. Are, yeah. Not saying not to tell the story without him. Since he got oh, is that what he's saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll just, I'll fill for time. So I had pancakes today. <laughs> oh, I've always, I've always got another story. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Like, I don't want to. I feel so like I'm never, never s- going to know what happened. You probably not. You know, you You'll probably learn the story when John comes back to Toronto in like May. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get the full disclosure on the story. Uh, but in any case, today for me was leg day. Uh, I hate leg day as, you know, I think I think a lot of, well, I can't say a lot of guys. I think a lot of, a lot, there are, there's a certain subset of men who, who train themselves, who, who work out. And leg day is not really our favorite. Like he came up through. If you came up exercising like through your teenage years as a boy, you know, most teenage boys, they're not really that big on leg day. If they, if they got to do it, you know, like every day is chest day if you're a 16 year old male. Right. Um, so I don't particularly care for leg day. I understand the necessity and I want to be balanced. You know, I'm I'm an older gentleman ish kind of. Uh, and I understand the, the need to not be shaped like Mighty Mouse. Uh, or uh, what's the what's the other guy's name? Johnny Bravo. I understand the need not to be shaped like Johnny Bravo oh, from God. Cartoon Network. You know, <laughs> like so. Uh, so on leg day, what I try to do is I try to temptation bundle. Now, Keto Amber, are you guys familiar with the concept of temptation bundling? Um, ever you've heard of this? No, Keto? but I am very you- intrigued. Never. Okay, okay. I am very intrigued this and is, I need to know this right now. Oh my this God. isn't in the right mindset for temptation bundling, but I think you know. Right, right, right. right. This this is, we're, we're going in a different, this is not our normal podcast direction. This is actually a real thing. To, like, there's no setup here when I say temptation bundling. 
that there's no there's no <laughs> lewd Ren Jones story about that happening here. <laughs> Temptation bundling uh, is just if you've got something that you like to do, you enjoy doing, like watching television. Well, that's the time that you do your exercise routine, perhaps. You give yourself the ability to watch your favorite show if you've got your home equipment in front of the television and you'll do your workout or you do it after you work out. You're you're bundling something that you really, really like with something that you may maybe don't mm-hmm. get really excited to do. It's a it's a form of, of habit formation. It is. I first was introduced to it in uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Uh, you know, you bundle something that you enjoy with something that you kind of don't enjoy only allowing yourself permission Mm -hmm. if you do the thing that you're supposed to do. For me, that's leg day, and it's also pancakes. So I love pancakes just as much as I hate leg day. So when I do leg day, I will treat myself to pancakes. There's Now, I can make pancakes. Let me just preface this whole story by saying there's no issue with my (laughs) pancake development skills here. Like, I'm I'm an, I'm an aficionado of pancakes. Like, I can throw a pancake down with the best of them because Kettle was giving me the look. Like, oh, uh, it's this, you probably don't know how to make pancakes. Pobrecito. Uh, but I know how to make pancakes and I knew one or two Spanish phrases, Kettle. So there you go. I hope your mom was listening to this episode because that's all the Spanish she's going to get. Yeah, yeah. That's all the Spanish she's getting out of the podcast. So proud. She's going to be so happy, happy with me. When it, I've already made, made so the acquaintance of uh, of your sister. Uh, so, you know, if I ever get to meet your mom on the mm-hmm. internet, she'll be proud of me. She's like, oh, you're the boy that said one Spanish phrase poorly. <laughs> uh, yes, that's me. That's me, ma'am. Um, in any case, so I did my leg day workout and I had my pancakes is what I'm leaning to. So I had I had three delicious fluffy pancakes. The, the remnants of those pancakes is sitting right across from me in this room. There's like three or four squares left. So I've got an mm-hmm. important question for you because this is going to tell the audience a lot about who we're dealing with here. And I'm going to start with Amber. Amber, in, in now, obviously, you, you both eat pancakes, so we don't have to go through that tragedy. Amber, you do not eat pancakes, nor waffles. Damn it, Amber, you're ruining the whole bit. Uh, <laughs> I'm so bland and yet. I'm so I'm so just like you, in you right now. There's there's no like Jonathan Good. No, no, I don't I don't even want to talk to you anymore about it, Amber. <laughs> Forget it. You're out. Yeah, uh, you are not. It's a no for me, Vanish. dog. You're not going to Hollywood. Um, so Keto, my good friend, my good friend, and obvious purveyor mm-hmm. of pancakes. Now, when you eat your pancakes, Keto, are you a are you a syrup on top? Go in with the fork. Or are you a pancake block organizer? And what I mean by that, you stack your three pancakes, slice, slice, slice. Do you tic-tac-toe your pancakes? I need to know this from you. What's what's your method? No. No, it's like a, it does, just draw, uh, drown them in syrup, and then, like, it gets soppy and soggy, and whatever falls right. Like, you just eat. Like, I don't know. There's no methodology to the. To the no, I can't, I can't. I can't. I cannot abide that. My pancakes have to. I, I need the hashtag pattern on the pancake. So, so you don't need a knife when you eat your pancakes. That's what I'm understanding. Like, you, you only need a no. fork. You need a soppy exactly. pancake and a fork. Okay. Um, you're, you're just far yeah. too reckless for me, Keto. I, I think that I'll not engage with you for the rest of this <laughs> podcast. Um, based on, based on that answer, At it's, least I'm, it's I'm not consistent. like I didn't already have enough. For, yeah. It's not like I didn't have all already enough reasons to disengage with you. Uh, but that's just one more. And I, I can't, I can't, you're past my limit now. Like you're, you've, you've risen, your, your personality you know like, has like risen. My, I like my pancakes. I like my pancakes, how I live my life, just reckless. Right. And that's and that's the most authentic <laughs> authentic thing you said here on this podcast, Keto. Uh I can I can see I can see from your from f- first of all from your from your attendance here <laughs> and some of your commentary <laughs> that totally aligns with your pancake methodology. <laughs> it's it's totally Totally in line with what what what, yes. what, we, what we're talking about here. So I guess due to Jonathan's super sketch internet, um, I don't know if we'll be able to get to tell this story mm-hmm. today with, keep without. Going, but we'll keep the show going, and if and when he decides to get his router together, we'll if, we'll share the story. If, if he pops in, the great thing is that we're sort of talking about a topic today that all three of us have had experience with. 
Um, and this came up in <laughs> not John. We him for this episode. And I'm questioning, did we ever need him for an episode? That's what I'm questioning. Um, but I digress. So um so Amber, we had a we had a post in, in the group. Would would you like since posts in the group are sort of your thing, you're the you're the facilitator of real time posting in our groups. Would you like to just sort of carry us into what the original poster in the group was was mentioning? Does that is that fair? Yeah. So right. Connor, who is one of our LP students, was asking us to help delineate what's the difference between giving free information versus paid information. Like, how do you draw the line from being helpful and giving away great information to what you should kind of gatekeep and charge for? Right, right. And and he he also, and, you know, I've, I've got to mention this because it was a part of the conversation. He also sort of mentioned maybe some concernish like questions because one of his comments I think was, you know, you guys give away a lot on the podcast. So what's the difference between being here in the OTA program versus just listen to the podcast? You got all the free, you basically spilling all the beans right there on the podcast, guys. Like the beans are at your feet. Perpetually. <laughs> There's constant, consistent bean spillage happening through the course of the podcast. And uh, and we were just sort of like, feel you, son. Like, because we felt him. Amber, did you feel the sun? Did you feel, feel him? I felt him. Yeah, of course. Okay. So Amber's <laughs> very compassionate individual. She, she felt him. So we thought that we'd talk about that today because there's a lot of concern. What's up, Jonathan? Hey, wait. Uh, While he's here, we need to talk. Jonathan's here <laughs> and... Here. Just in time for the show notes, Jonathan. So, all I have, I have legitimately. Slash... <laughs> this this will probably not still work. I I still can't get my other router to work. Um, yeah, that's all right. Oh we'll, we'll, we'll game plan for the next time. I think next time what we'll do is we'll pre-record you saying things, and we'll have a podcast around that. We'll be three paid actors responding to your lines. <laughs> Amber will send out some scripts. It'll be fine. So, Jonathan, we had gotten into the question that came up in the group. I did not tell the story. Told a totally I was I was wondering story. how to eat pancakes, though. Right, Talk right. There you go. Pancakes. There, there, there you go. So now you know. The proper way to eat pancakes, uh, much to Carolina's dismay, is to cut them in the hashtag pattern, the tic-tac-toe pattern, so that you have some circular square pancakes on the outer rim in the center of your pancakery. You've got perfect. You've got a perfect grid. You've got a perfect Instagram grid <laughs> of pancake pieces. Jonathan You're wanted wrong. to know that, so, I, so I, no, no, Jonathan, I'm not wrong. No, I'm not wrong, sir. I'm, yeah. I'm right. I'm the oldest. Every, and I'm right. Every Sunday morning. <laughs> oh, here we go. Every Sunday morning for my entire childhood, oh my father made us pancakes. Oh, that's awesome. I have a lot of experience eating pancakes, my friend. I don't think so, Jonathan. You you just don't even have the you don't have the right pancake look. Can I be can I be can, can I tell can I tell the story? Can I tell the story? You can try if, if Mexico okay. wants it wants so, it to be let out of their borders. So I get a message from Ren. I get a I get a I get a Facebook message from Ren. Oh boy. This is last week. And it's a screenshot. And it's an OTC student. And the screenshot from the OTC student says, Hey. It's wildly inappropriate to have your presenters have pornography open on their computer while they're presenting. Pornhub tab. Okay. What? So immediately what? now my response yeah. is Yeah. 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 So, there were so two, the background. There were two Pornhub tabs open yeah. uh, on the on the so this kettle, this is the this is the recording of the seminar that we do once a month in the OTC with Joe explaining his programming methodology. So he does right. a seminar. If you don't catch it, there's a recording of it. And in the recording, one of the OTC students said, it's so inappropriate to have Pornhub tabs open on your presenter's uh, recorded message. So so immediately now, my response is, holy crap, that's inappropriate. What? How am I going to deal with this? I've never dealt with anything like this 
where anybody on my staff or that works for us or whatever um, has done this. I don't even know what to do. My second response is that's goddamn funny. That's and real. so. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I, I step away, I step away from my phone for a, a few minutes because I'm like, I got to think about how to deal with this. Like, it's kind of awkward to bring it up. Do we send an apology to everybody? Do we wait till people notice it and just send it to us right. and then we apologize and talk about how we recommended the person or whatever it is? How am I going to tell Joe? You know, hey, right. Joe, like you forgot to close the pornography on your computer when you were presenting of a programming. Okay. So I opened oh back God, up my no phone. Way. Oh. So I opened back up my phone and there's a message from Alex and he's like, bro. And I'm like, bro, this is funny, but what are we going to do about this? And he's like, bro, you will not believe what has happened. The screenshot that the person sent to us. Why? When you look closely at it, shows very clearly the programming seminar recording video in the embed. And what they did is they took a screenshot of their entire screen. So you don't see Joe's entire computer. You just see the video of Joe presenting. But... The screenshot that the uh -huh. person sent is their computer. The tabs that were open were their oh, own tabs. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so no. After, I, after I tell John the story, they so if John's you've like, not oh. followed this, so if you've not yeah. followed this, this person <laughs> sent us a message talking about how inappropriate it was that there is pornography open on the presenter's screen and sent us, and there was not, let's be very clear, there was not, the pornography that was open was on their own computer. <laughs> oh my oh God. Gosh. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So that was so the I, greatest I, thing that's ever happened oh to me in my profession. Oh God. I took, a, I took it straight to Alex. And that John, is Because when I talked to John, John, John was like, hey, have you discussed with this Alex? I was like, no. No, he said, take, take it to Alex. So I took, I took it to Alex. Alex looks at it for about five minutes, comes back. I think that's on their screen. And I'm like, no way. And Alex is like, it's like oh, then Alex, said, Alex says this to me, oh, my God. If this is on their screen, this is the funniest shit I've ever seen working at it. How did you so, answer? So, dear listener. The amount of joy that this brought to our company. <laughs> Alex so we are now Alex sharing no... with you. <laughs> so, so I, so Alex said this to me, and I'm just wait. So this is somebody complaining that there's porn <laughs> open on their own computer while they're watching a video. Alex's response: <laughs> Correct. I'm still over the moon about it, honestly. It's been bringing me a lot of joy. <laughs> and then I responded, this is going on the podcast. And he says, oh, it has to. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. It was just. You know what? Nothing as heartwarming as an accidental porn story, really. Like, my heart is just. Right, right. Oh, but nice. it was. It's, but, uh... but, so, so talk about, like, like, this was also, this was a female. And yeah, she clearly yeah. didn't know, like, oh, maybe she was, like, borrowing her husband's computer. Like, what is going on in that household right now is I, my I question. Told, I told Jonathan, somebody in that house is going to get a stern talking to uh, <laughs> tonight. I don't know who it is. I just know that it's happening uh, because she's, she's embarrassed her. So, so said, well, I said, well, Alex, I just, I told her, you know, sorry. Alex was like, well, you can't just leave it there. You've got to be clear to her that's not from coming from our organization. So you've got to go back mm -hmm. and tell her that it's on her computer. And I was like, well, th thanks, Alex. Yeah. This, this will be, this will be a, an easy, joyful conversation. It's all you, it's all you bro. Um, yeah. Alex was like, no, nah, man, you can handle it. I said, thanks, oh, thanks, gosh. thanks, dude. Uh, oh, so yeah, it was, it was definitely <laughs> uncomfortable. So, so what I, here's how I put it. I delicately said, Hey, you know, uh, blank, 
I went back and I watched that seminar just a minute ago. I got to tell you, I didn't see those Pornhub tabs anywhere on it. Perhaps you should go back and watch it again. And she went back and watched it again. Her reply was, that's odd. Uh, I don't see it this time. And then her second reply about 30 minutes after, and I think this is when the realization happened. Her second reply was, but I still see the magnesium tab because there was a tab open about magnesium. Uh, and I still see the cohort two tab. Uh, those look like the same tabs that were on the. No, oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, 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 that was researching. well, so, yeah. here's, it, so it, here's, it, here's the funniest thing to me. So you sent me the screenshot from her. And yeah, the exact words were weird, but that's good. LOL. The magnesium right. and cohort two tabs are the same, and you're right, the others aren't there. So weird. <laughs> ah, well, problem solved. Right. And that's the point when I think somebody in the household oh, got stern like talking to. Yeah, like magically it went <laughs> yeah. away. And I, and I, her, her, her intensity in the conversation dropped off tremendously after that realization. Uh, and it was, it was a lot of LOLs after that. Um, I however, just, I just want to appreciate that this has happened. I just want to take right. even more moments of your time <laughs> to appreciate just how funny everything about this situation is because I'm sitting there and I'm like, how am I going to have this conversation with Joe? What do you do here? Like as a business owner, like, what do you do? Like this went out to, right. I mean, there was, there was 125 people because we have 125 clients that are like, going to like, do you send a message? Like, how do you word that apology? Right. 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 Um, sorry. You, know, you caught, you caught Joe in a personal moment. Um, right. Right. A personal moment. And, and I'm like, I'm like stressing <laughs> over this. Right. <laughs> and then, and, and then it starts. <laughs> Dear oh self-care, goodness. dear OTC student, self-care is an expressive and <laughs> important thing that we value here as traders at the PTDC and its affiliates. Uh, we encourage we all, all of our employees and, and contractors to, yeah, yeah, to, uh, to prioritize self-care whenever possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we dip into the self-care topic, we want to highlight something that happened here recently. <laughs> that you may have noticed on your computer screen, <laughs> tablet, or mobile device. Uh, if you're a familiar internet surfer, you may you may have recognized the <laughs> logos on either side of the magnesium and cohort two tab on your device. It, it, it seems uh, like uh, one of the staff members for the organization was browsing um, the third most popular website in the world at the time. <laughs> Yeah. I was so conflicted because oh, I didn't know if it was Alex, great. and that's why I went to Jonathan because I didn't want to talk to Alex <laughs> about it. So, so free stuff. We've got six and a half minutes left in this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we got uh, no time left. What are we talking about? Yeah, it's like it's like twelve twelve minutes. <laughs> oh the, yeah, because uh, because Connor brought it up. You want to? Did you talk it. about? We should keep going. Um, yeah, Am- Amber Amber talked about the comment already, so we we know what the subject is. Okay, so so, so free is. free stuff. Hey, Jonathan Goodman here. This podcast is made possible thanks to people like you. Here's a quick word from our sponsors. Are you still trying to pick your online training software? If so, let me make this easy for you. Go with PT Distinction. It's truly the best, and I'm not just saying that because they're our sponsor. We actually use PT Distinction for our own online fitness business, online trainer coaching, and we're really happy with it. From onboarding to programming to client communication, PT Distinction has everything you need to run your online fitness business smoothly, and it's super simple to use. Now, normally they offer a free 30-day trial, but as a listener of the Online Trainer Show, you get a free 60-day trial, so you can make sure you love them before spending a dime. If you want to deliver first-class service to your clients while reclaiming your time, then visit onlinetrainer.com slash PTD to sign up for your free 60-day trial today. If you're a fitness nutrition coach that's looking to master online coaching so that you can help more people, make more money, and have more freedom, then the Online Trainer Academy can help. OTA gives you the framework, knowledge, and support to have predictable success with your online coaching business. From marketing to business development to how to assess and motivate your clients online, it is constantly updated and refreshed to keep up with a dynamic market. Not only that, OTA is proven. 
In seven years, we've helped over 30,000 coaches in 87 countries go online. Truth is, we know what works, so you can get right to the success part. And in case you're busy working a full-time job or you're a full-time parent, know that you can go at your own pace. There's no deadlines to complete OTA and you have lifetime access. That said, if you are ready to make a rapid change and finish the course in the next 8 to 12 weeks, you can expect to invest 3 to 5 hours each week on the program. And here's the best part. If you join today, you will make an extra $1,000 a month in 90 days or I'll give you your money back. So if you're ready to build the fitness business you want and make the money you deserve, go to onlinetrainer.com slash academy to enroll today. And I hope to see you in there. The the question and and the topic came up, where do you draw the line between, you know, quote unquote, giving away the farm, which colloquialism for giving up away too much, too many things for free. um, And, 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 you know, and how do you build a business if you're always giving stuff away? Uh, If you're putting out information all the time, does it handicap or cripple in any way your business, your ability to generate income in the context of what you do? So we well, and also, all had a and response. I think, I think there's an extension to that as well. Not just does it handicap yes. what you're allowed to do, does it devalue what you're allowed to do, I think is the other thing. Like, does it devalue the actual products or services right. that you're giving out? Because now you're basically setting the value of what you're actually doing to free. How are you going to get people to pay for it? Right. You've clearly spent a lot of time and effort and usually money acquiring the specialized knowledge. And so now you're basically saying it's not worth anything is the worry. I'm not saying that that's true, but that's kind of the word. Right. Right. That's that's the word. So. So, Jonathan, would would you like to tee off here? Like, um, you know, sort of sort of what your response is to that to that question. Um, I mean, you're talking to a guy who's spent many millions of dollars providing free material right. on the internet for the last nine years, right? Um, so uh, mm-hmm. clearly, you know what side of the camp I'm on. You know, it's worked out pretty good for me. Uh, right. the, uh, <laughs> you know, like we've produced over a thousand articles, right? All for free. Um, there is pretty much nothing mm-hmm. that I know that you can't get for free on the internet. And right. uh And I think that's great because really what it comes down to very, very simply is that uh, information is not valuable. There is maybe there's some extremely highly specialized information that exists that's like secret. But the reality of it is basically anything you ever want to learn, you can get for free. You really can. You really can. Uh, so, So to think that anything you know about fitness is worth anything um, is is perhaps an, <laughs> an overestimation of right. your own knowledge. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was a weird way to say that. That was a weird way to say that. But, but, it's true. So, like, but that's not a bad thing, right? So basically what it comes down to, the delineation is this, okay? The, 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 the information... Um, the what do you do is free. The application of that information is what's paid. There so what people are paying you for is mm-hmm. how to apply it. Is the wisdom is the wisdom and insight and thoughtfulness to figure out how to apply that information in coaching. Right. The reason why coaches earn more than like books is because coaches' jobs are to figure out how to do that specifically for you, whereas books is just the information, right? There's some application, but it's not specific to you. So that's why mm-hmm. coaching costs more than books. And then it's the accountability and the follow through as you go in. That's what's paid. Um, give away everything for free that you know, because that's going to attract people. Understanding that um, people don't do anything with free information, like right, really, ever. Most people don't do mm. anything with paid information. True. Right. So, right. <laughs> I don't know, Amber. You'll say it, you'll say it more exactly. eloquently than me and then when they you have, again, and then they pay again. Yeah. Right. And then and then when you got like a really dumb, obscure, uh, really graphic metaphor to sum this up, so maybe we'll right. just go with all that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up the rear, so to speak. Yeah, um, you'll bring it up the rear. Uh, foreshadowing. Okay, Amber, go for it. <laughs> yeah, you've got to do things now. Do something. Wait, I thought do something. Man. Do something. <laughs> Amber, do something. I don't know. What I, what I told Connor was, was the same thing, but 
how what that might look like, right? Is the, the example I gave Connor was, you know, you might teach someone that, you know, your environment dictates your actions. And so if you're wanting to lose weight, for example, you want to create an environment that's conducive to that. So that's like the the big uh, big picture view of what should be happening. But if you're going to teach them how to do it, you might be selling something where you're setting up your kitchen for uh, fat loss success. So how to do that specifically is what you charge for. But the overlying theme of creating a, an environment that is conducive to your goals is the the free information that you share. Right. Right. K- Kettle, what's, what's your take here? Because you were one of the only ones that wasn't on, actually on the uh, the the post. Uh, you came back to see the post later, but um, you know where where are you with like free content? Um, like do you do you feel? I feel that we should give it all away because very much like Jonathan said, like it, there's nothing that we know that is like the secret to success or the secret that is going to make or break your fit. It's not true. Like I'm totally fine with it. A lot of my knowledge is, is still very basic in a lot of business areas, for example. Totally fine with that. I still share what I know. And if it helps somebody, then that's the people that are going to be part of my group, right? They're going to resonate with what I have to say. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly. You know, um, I think, and I did a post about this, uh, I think not more than five days ago, it was three or four three to five days ago. Um, but the, it was, it was part of my Friday tea. I like to, I, I like to be a little bit, uh, of a jerk every Friday and just get things off my chest. Just it's total snark. It's, it's totally being snarky is what it is. Uh, that, and that's the whole purpose of just, but I just to get it out on Friday. Way to give yourself a platform to do that. Right, right. It's on Friday, healthy. I just do it. And, and I think my last Friday tea was something like, um, you know, yeah, you should you should definitely hire that coach that told you that they were too busy to answer questions for free. I'm sure they'll be a lot more helpful after you pay them. Like that that was sort of my statement. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, exactly. Like because because for most of us exactly. it's our passion, and you should make money at your passion. There's nothing about it being your passion that says you have to you know do it at no cost for you for for life. But it's hard. It's genuinely hard for me to not answer someone's question. Like I have a difficult time knowing somebody specifically came to me thinking this other human has some insight that can improve my existence on the planet and me and me dishonoring that by saying, yeah, I really don't have time to answer questions for free, bro. Like uh, Google it, you know, as Jonathan and I said on the podcast that aired today, um, just Google it. So you know, you're not going to put yourself in a in a marketing disadvantage by helping people at minimal or no cost. The reason that I've spent several thousand dollars at this mm-hmm. point with Jonathan Goodman, and I'm just here basically working off that debt. Um, but the reason I've spent that money <laughs> is because of all of the I mean, the reality of it is the, the, the interest that you're charged on that debt far more is <laughs> far more. Oh yeah, far to be far away is what I'm what I'm yeah. doing here. Far away, like <laughs> at this worse. point. At this point, I will be a male nanny for Ken, you like, Calvin's you great like that guy. You like that guy <laughs> who comes and picks you up in a pickup truck driving Uber. Right. It is like <laughs> it is costing you more to drive this truck. Then it is that I'm paying you what, to take me. What you're like, I, make got, I got picked up in an fair. SUV driving Uber. It's like, bro, you are literally <laughs> losing money driving this car right now. Like, what? How have you not done this math? So you and you are you are the Uber driver driving a pickup truck. I am. I am. I'm. I'm in the. I'm in the negative here. Like every, literally every podcast we do, I go further into the red. Yeah. Uh, how, however, you're not going to do yourself a disservice by by answering people's questions, right? Um, because here and here's I I can probably pull out two good bullet points, maybe three. Bullet point number one: Why it's helpful. I want the to metaphor. What's the metaphor you gave? The, the, oh, the uh, the T Bone Steak. Yeah. So what I told yeah. you know I love the movie Tommy Boy. If you guys seen it, the late Brian Dennehy plays the father of the late. Gosh, they're all dead. The late Chris Farley in this movie Tommy Boy, and he works at a he works at a break place. They're they're in uh they're in Sandusky, Ohio, in the movie. Yes, and yes, they have yes. a they have a place. They have a manufacturing company for auto parts, Callahan Auto Parts. And it and early in the uh, early in the movie, 
one of the guys is going to buy a bulk <laughs> order of auto parts from Tommy Boy's dad, uh, ask him for a guarantee. There's no guarantee on the box. And his comeback as a salesperson was like, guarantee, you don't need a guarantee. He's like, hey, you can get a good look at a T-bone by sticking your head up a bull's ass, but I'd rather take the butcher's word for it. And <laughs> and that's 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 what I, that's what I gave to the, the young man in the in the post, right? Like, because <clears throat> his comment was if you can't, if you're if I'm giving away things, people aren't gonna hire me for perhaps. And and that was my reply to that comment. Like people can cut their own steak, bro. Like they can learn everything about steak. You can teach them everything there is to know about the beef and steak industry. And the only thing that that's probably going to do is make them want you as their butcher because you're so knowledgeable and you inform them. Like people don't, people don't want to categorize all this information, even though it's on Google. Nobody wants to surf Google for all this information and categorize it and filter it down to the best way of processing the most important information to devise a process that they can utilize repeatedly. That's not me making a noise. I don't know who that is. It's not me though. Yeah, who is uh, that? You know, people people don't want, it was Keto. This is the Taco Queen. Uh, taco Queen. You're the Taco Queen. I feel a little disco. Young and there, sweet Keto. like a uh, she's <laughs> 17. <laughs> I can't believe Jonathan Goodman knows that reference. Uh, pop culture <laughs> disco reference you never see so amazing out then why in the hell do you know that song and that i don't know out, and i didn't know the, like the nsync dance yeah yes that's so odd to me in any case i did i did the backstreet boy dance instead of the nsync dance how embarrassing is you did, that Jonathan. it was it was it was sad it was sad, yeah. especially for your age. Terrible. Uh, Terrifying. Some, somehow you know Dancing mm-hmm. Queen by ABBA, and I just cannot reconcile that on this podcast today. I'll never understand how you know that song that came out 30 years before you were born. In any case, and you seem to like it, too. Like, you enjoyed <laughs> the, the melody of the song, like, as if you either danced and or roller skated to it at some point. Uh, but I know it's all available here in Mexico <laughs> if you want it. What was I saying? So yes, this so podcast giving, has just gone off. This is this is easily it been never got on, Jonathan. Let me tell you, you missed half most, of it. It never got on the radio. Brand the Butcher off. Jones. We got right. Brand the Butcher Jones right here. It's it's basically it's just a, it's, it's a mess. Basically, a mess. we nah. just spent give or take forty five minutes talking about pancakes, a whole bunch of other stuff. When I wasn't on it, trying to fix my internet. Pretty much. Um, pretty much. Uh, what happens when a colleague does a presentation with pornography open on their computer and how basically, awkward that is basically. to uh, ABBA, to a bunch of other stuff. I don't even remember what it was. It was so long ago. All to say one thing that could have been said in one line, which is pretty much, yes, you should give away your information for free. Right. <laughs> this This whole debacle yeah. of a show boils down to we think you should give some information away. And it's one o'clock, so we can go. So yeah. Ren, do the show notes. Let's get out of here. Yeah. We did our job. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever been less pleased to be associated with any production of anything in my life. And this is on audio, so people are going to hear this more than once. Can we scrub this one? Don't we have an interview that we can put in place of this episode 61? We just scrub- Let's just scrub this one. Uh, it's, it's been, it's just been a, it's been a damn mess. I, I don't know another way to express it. Uh, so I, uh, also you're welcome, Romania, I guess, whatever. So I'll, I'll be Romanians got something out of it. Yeah. That's what, that's what they come here for. So we've got show notes at online trainer.com slash podcast. You can go. I don't know how these show notes are going to be organized for 61. I can't, I can't imagine what the timestamps are. I'm just glad that I don't do it. Uh, God bless you, Amber. Is this your? Is, or do do you have to come up with timestamps for this? Okay, okay, good, good. Because I can only imagine like timestamp twenty five, twenty six. Jonathan pops back in. You know, time well, stamp, is the people who do the timestamps don't work for us, right? Like it's a company that we hire to do it. So they're listening to this thing and they're like, "What in the hell? How do these people have money to pay us?" <laughs> Like they're, they're they're probably worried about this contract. I just, I just want to see the messages. You in know what? They Slack. have money to pay because they gave right. information for free for so long. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. Thank you for wrapping that back up. I just want to see. The, I just want to see the messaging in the Slack <laughs> channel 
between Amber and the company that does the production. You know, uh, you guys left out the Pornhub timestamp, and uh, it's not on the YouTube verse. Like, I just want to yeah. see that conversation. <laughs> well, happen, I there's not a lot of good for a dick counter because <laughs> everybody not to be a dick, and we kept saying it over and over again. They, I assume, I refused to put it in because it wasn't in the video. <laughs> Wait, they refused to put it in? <laughs> I don't know if they actually did. They did. I did ask. <laughs> but they didn't, but it wasn't. Like, <laughs> that's too bad. And now, and now the head of the PTDC is concerned that there was no dick counter <laughs> that, on that episode. I on listened a YouTube that episode. video. <laughs> Yeah, I listened to that episode this morning when I was I was running intervals, and it was it was legitimately really funny. Like that entire episode, episode was oh, legitimately God. like like I listen to a lot of comedy, it, and it was a good I mean episode. what we do sometimes I'm like yeah this is funny for us, but like objectively not that funny. But that right, episode right. objectively was really really it was, funny. It was objectively I listened to it when I trained today. <laughs> Uh, yeah. during during my leg day session, and I found myself laughing out loud in in the, in the fitness facility here a couple of times. Yeah. It, it was it was pretty it was it was pretty entertaining. This one not so much. This this is going to be on the low this end. Is, this one's going to have its moments, here. but you're going to have to sift through like a whole pile of just yeah nothing. yeah yeah. Uh, so uh, so in any case, yeah. signing off for the Taco Queen. So is this internet in Mexico good enough to do this? Amber and myself, Ren Jones. Thank you for coming to this 61, uh, which is obviously the senility uh, episode yep. of the podcast. We're in our 60s. We're getting a little slow now. A little bit, a we're bit, get, we're a getting the gold now. watch in the fishing rod pretty soon. Yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. We're, we're, ma- we're mares out to pasture here. Yeah. Uh, head on our way to the glue factory. Uh, no offense to the vegans out there. It's just jokes. Whoa. Uh, jingle, jingle, I guess. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>